Good morning, this is Cindy. Welcome to my channel. And today, on this fabulous Friday, we're taking a look at 10 junk journal activities to do when you're laid up or when you're sitting in front of the TV. And where this comes from, I, last August, had to have a knee replaced. And it's a partial knee replacement, uh, which means I wasn't laid up quite as long as a full knee replacement, but I was still laid up for quite a while. And I asked around to various groups and a lot of people, what are some things that I can do? And I got a bunch of ideas. And then I, while I was sitting there, I got a bunch of other ideas and whatnot. And I thought, I'm going to go ahead and share them with you because a lot of these can be done in front of the television. They're simple things that don't require a lot of thought that allow you to just keep your hands busy while you're watching TV. This was my grandmother. I learned this from my grandmother. My grandma always had her knitting and she always would sit in the evenings and watch TV with my grandfather and knit. And my mom would do the same thing when she got older and no longer was having to deal with us little kids. Uh, she would sit and she wasn't so much of a crocheter, but she did plastic canvas. She made, uh, she used those looms and made placemats and hot pads. Um, my mom was very artsy. She did a lot of different things. She did greenware. She did liquid embroidery. Uh, she did regular embroidery. You name it, my mom did it. So we're going to talk, however, about junk journals and what you can do with a junk journal. So the first thing up is fussy cutting. You can easily fussy cut pretty much anything that you need to do while you're sitting in front of the TV. If you don't have to be watching the screen or if you don't, if you're laid up, of course, if you're laid up and you're on some very pleasant painkillers, you might want to wait on this one until you're not quite so... Um, Hmm, feeling good, shall we say. These came from the Junk Journal Studio. These are blue labels. And what I did when I was laid up in August, I cut so many of these brown labels. I had bought her brown labels. She didn't have the blue ones at the time. And so I bought the brown labels and I cut up hundreds, I swear, of the brown labels. So this is just, and I'm not going to cut all of these. I'm just doing this as a demonstration. That this is fussy cutting is something that you can do when you're laid up. Of course, this is assuming that you are not laid up with a broken arm. Okay, so there's two things, and I'm going to leave that there. These are blue labels from Days Gone By 5. Uh, this is page 5. There are six pages in every single group. Actually, there are 12 because there's 5A and 5. There's 5 and 5A, 6 and 6A, all the way through, you know, the whole thing. Um, and I love these. I'll put a link below to her shop for the Junk Journal Studio. So that's the first thing that you can do. I have my list over here. I'm going to keep it up out of sight for the moment. Second thing you can do is make clusters. These are some extra pages that I had. And so just grab your scraps and put some things together. I like the fact that that's got a hole in the middle of it. So let's put it this way and this way. And did I get my stapler out yet? I did not. I'll grab my stapler. Let's see if I've got any other fancy little thingy in there that can go in. There's a little bit. There. Make clusters. And then staple them. Ta-da! Now I have a cluster made out of the stuff, out of my junk pile. My scrap pile. These are my little scraps. So I'm just going to, I just took a few of them, stuck them together. Now I have a cluster. 
easy peasy. And what's nice about these is you just staple them and then once you put them into whatever it is that you're going to put them into, you put your focal point over the top of it, like a butterfly or a flower or something, over the top to hide your staple. If you have a little stapler that makes the little tiny, like the half size staples, that's even better. I don't, I mean this is a little stapler, but it is, it just does full size staples. So there you go. So fussy cutting and that. Okay. The second part, the, or the third thing that you can do, is you can fold stuff. I put things together here. So, um, the first thing, for example, you can fold pages for signatures. What's nice about this is it doesn't matter if you are making a, a particular journal right now. Uh, I think I want to, there we go, I want to do this. And fold it in half so you can just sit at your in your chair and just fold paper it doesn't take much time and then what you'll have when you're done is an entire let me pull that off these are some pages that I pulled out of a math notebook it was a junior high math book I think I don't know, maybe eighth grade. I picked up for cheap at a thrift store. This is a piece of, okay, you want to know the measurements of my shelving unit that I put in over here in the corner? My husband said, how big do you want it to be? So I made plans. Now it's going to be for a junk journal. So What's nice about this is that once you have all of these pages folded over, and I have a whole box of them, when I go to do a signature, I can just leaf through them and say, okay, which ones do I want for this particular signature? I don't have to take time to, you know, I can just do it and they're there. So fold stuff, fold signatures. You can also fold six by six pages and I'm just going to pull a couple out of pull one out of here to start with into folders so I do this and then I can use my template to cut my corners I want a slightly bigger one so let me grab the slightly bigger template and my scissors now this assumes, of course, again, that you're okay using scissors. If you're not okay using scissors yet, don't do this one yet. Let this one be till a little bit later in your, your recovery. And now you have a fold out folder ready to go. Now, if you don't have a template, there is a very, very easy way to do this. Um, let me take another one that's got some pattern to it. This particular book of six by sixes, by the way, came from the Dollar Tree. It's Everyday Papers, American Crafts. Okay, I'm gonna fold it in half again, just like it did before. But if you don't want to use a template or I don't have a template, I just make my cut and then turn it over and use it as a pattern for the other side. And now I have a folder. Okay, so you can create full, you can fold folders. Um, you could fold dyed pages, which I already did with my coffee dyed page here. It's got a rip in it, so I don't know if I'm going to use it for as a signature page or if I'll do something else with it. But we'll leave it there for now. You can also fold pockets, and this is just an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper, and I am going to fold this quickly into pockets. Um, it is a little bit heavier stock than computer paper, but not by much. It's uh, kind of midway between computer paper and um, cardstock. I have done this with cardstock before. I like it better with a slightly thinner paper like this because it is a little bit easier to fold 
but it doesn't really matter. If you'd like a tutorial, I'm not going through the explanation as to how to do this, but if you'd like a tutorial and step-by-step -step instructions on how to do this particular fold, um, I do have a video and I'll link it down below. Ta-da! We'll put a little notch in there. Um, you might save your notch till later, but look at that. A five-fold pocket. You, you can do a pocket back here. You've got a pocket in here. You have a pocket in here. And then if you look inside, you have a pocket here and a pocket here and a pocket here. This is a great pocket. I love this pocket. It's an easy fold. And you saw how quick it was. It didn't take me hardly any time whatsoever. So fussy cut, make clusters, fold stuff. Um, you can make bases for, court, for journal cards. Sometimes if some these are just scraps that I had, um, and I can corner round them and because I'm doing all of these things without glue, I tried to find a bunch of things that I didn't have to deal with glue because when I am sitting in my chair and I've got my feet kicked back and I'm reclining, um, it's really hard to use the glue and not make a total mess of things. This one's a little bit smaller, so I'll use my smaller corner rounder. These are the only two corner rounders I have. I have seen the one that has four different ways in it. Sorry about that. This one has a loud snap, and I really like that, but don't have one. So there you go. I'm not going to do them all right now. The whole point is to just show some ideas so you can make you can do this you can also turn them into tags if you wanted this to be a tag where did i just put my little i can easily do that again and make a tag out of it i can sit there and make tags so you can make uh bases for journal cards and round those corners or you can make bases for tags now it's all set, ready to go. When I want, and when I get well, or when I'm no longer at the sitting at the TV, I can go ahead and de decorate them. None of this is decorating. Okay, you can rip apart a book. So now this one's a little bit. You have to be a little bit careful on this one because again, this requires sharp objects. This particular book is one that I'm in the process of ripping apart, um, so pieces of it are already falling apart. I like to be able to keep the things together, but as you can see, it is a sewn in signature and these signatures are all sewn in, but it means that I have to be very careful in pulling them out. And sometimes I have to get my seam ripper in there and open it up. So pulling apart a book is an easy thing to do while you are laid up. Cut up magazines or newspapers. This is a great opportunity to sit there. Actually, you know what? I'm going to get my fancy scissors on this one. Um, there we go. I want my jagged edge for this particular one a little bit. So you can use your fancy scissors to cut things out of magazines. And this is an old reminisce. This is actually from... December 2001 so it's an old reminisce that was has been hanging around for a while and it's time to cut it up and use the things inside there we go so cut up things out of magazines that's another great way to spend the time just sit there and flip through the magazines okay a really easy something to do when you are looking for something to do, this is a gray, so we'll start with the gray, is to take a page of book and just color it. Okay, this one needs to be sharpened, but it still works. And I'll throw a little bit of blue up in with the gray. Now, what would you do with this when you're done? I'll show you. Let me just finish this one off. 
And I can do the whole page in the same color. I can do it in different colors of the same type of green or the same shade of, or same, well, I, come on, you got words. The same color, but different hues, varieties. Put some green up in here. And then later stamp over it and create these. Let me show you one. Things like that. And then that makes a nice little piece that you can put on top of your cluster. You can put it on the front of your piece here. It's a little big for that one. It can go on a tag, but it makes a nice little focal point. So these you can stamp on later, however you want to stamp on them, and make little focal points out of them. You can also rip them up and use them on, uh, on these journal cards when you're decorating the journal cards. You can also do music. Um, I'm going to pick a piece of music here. And you can do the same thing on the music. You're just going to cover over. You're basically coloring the page in. And like I said, this does not require a lot of thought to color this in. It's just choosing your colors and going down the page and making, you know, so you get the point. You don't need me to do the whole page again. You get the point. Now, um, so coloring, coloring in coloring books. I have this page from before. There's nothing that says you can't color it in before you put it in a journal. I've done that before and in fact sold that journal already with one that I had colored uh, during my convalescence. Um, but color it in. You're sitting there, you don't have anything else to do. Color it in. And then you can put it in a journal all colored. And then, of course, the last and the final, number 10. And these really aren't in any sort of order. Ink those edges. Grab all that fussy cutting that you have done and ink those edges. If you like an edged um, signature page, also a great opportunity to cut the signature to to do the signature page if you have other ideas for things that you can do make sure you put them in the comments because this is only a partial list so you can fussy cut i'm going to put my list right here feel free to take a screenshot you can fussy cut you can make clusters you can fold stuff. You can fold signature pages. You can fold six by sixes. If you got a lot of those hanging around, take your six by sixes and fold them into. And then later on, you can stuff these. We can put pockets on them or you can put. Um, I've done this before where I've taken paper, uh, lined paper and put lined paper in and made little notebooks out of them. But they're nice bases. And now there you have them and you're done. You can make journal cards. Where's my other journal card? Journal cards for bases. You can make tags for bases. Oh, under the folding, you can also fold this. Remember, I'll put the link to how that goes down below. You can rip apart an entire book. Sit there and just, again, if you're good with a seam ripper and it's okay to do that with a seam ripper, do that. Cut up magazines or newspapers. Time to, you know, get them, get them used up. Get those pieces ready to be used for some other thing. Color. Color the pages. Color them in. Do something with them. And then, of course, where'd my page go? You can color in the book pages. And you can fussy cut. Or you can ink those edges. So we're going to bring those back up and ink those edges. So... If you have other ideas of what you can do when you're laid up, please make sure you put that in the comments below. If you're enjoying this video, please make sure you hit the like button and hit subscribe. 
click the bell for notifications as to when the next video is going to come out. Um, I did not get out my walkthrough Wednesday video this past week. I intended to, but I didn't quite finish it. So I'm, and I don't want to show you something only partly done. So hopefully that will be finished by next Wednesday. So watch the notifications uh, because I, I will put out a note. There will be a notification when the next one comes out. In the meantime, have a great weekend. And this is Cindy signing off.